your father and your mother. And then honor even uh, the ones who are uh, older ones in age. We need to be humble. We need to respect them. You know, and uh, let me just read out a few scriptures. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 32. It says, Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man and fear thy God, I am the Lord. Thou shalt rise up, those days are over. <laughs> Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head, gray head. Now, of course, today the gray-haired people are almost not there. They all have blackened themselves. That's another story. But the scripture says very clearly that we have to respect the elderly. Especially as the disciples of the Lord, this is what the scripture says. Honor the face of the old man and fear thy God. So there are, you know, um, there are certain things that we as his disciples in this perverse generation, we need to do in our lives. I say this to uh, young people. You know, it is sad to see, I know that in my younger days, how I used to honor my father and my mother. My father who was not a believer at all. My father who never went to church. But I respected him, I honored him. And I, I tell my children, you need to know this. Honoring and respecting doesn't mean that we dishonor God and honor our parents. That's not what it means. But there's an attitude. There is a heart that we have to maintain in humility. And I want to say this to all our young brothers and sisters especially, including myself, that we need to honor the elderly. It doesn't have to be that they should be very spiritual people. The Bible doesn't say that. But we have to honor them. And as again, as I said, to what measure, what limit, the Holy Spirit will help us to know this. But it's again a condition within, an attitude, is a matter of our hearts. And may God help us. And we are living in a time of such rebellion almost everywhere. You go to schools, it's why not? <laughs> you go to the colleges, why not? People are willing to break the law and pay the fine. So we find this terrible spirit almost everywhere ruling. But we are a different people, a people of a different kingdom as we heard. Also, please turn with me to the book of Proverbs. Chapter 23 and verse 22. Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. So these are scriptures. So the Bible very clearly tells us as young people to honor and respect the elderly or the elder ones, older ones in our midst or even outside. That is God's word. So we see here that as the disciples of the Lord, the most important mark upon us is one of humility. One of humility in our own lives. And the Holy Spirit will surely help us to understand 
you know, the limitations to what measure the Holy Spirit will help us. But this is an attitude we have to maintain in ourselves. And if we know how to honor our parents and the elderly, very sure that we will be able to do this even in God's house. While writing to Timothy, Paul very clearly instructs, you know, he tells very clearly as to how they ought to be in God's house. When you get time, read 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 1 onwards. In verse 1 it says, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren. And in verse 2 we read, The elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters with all purity. So one thing is very clear that the word of God tells a disciple that he or she ought to be humble and learn to respect and honor others. Beginning with our parents, the older ones and those even in God's house. And I think that this is of great importance to every true uh, believer and disciple of the Lord. And we are not to disrespect, you know, our parents when they grow old. The Word of God also is very clear about that. Now, having said all that, I would like to further move on to one or two things because the time is running out. And that is, you know, we are living in a time there is, um, there are so many things around us, especially the young ones, to draw them away from the Lord attracting them uh, into this world. You know, we read about um, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 And verse 25. It says, Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Pleasures. Pleasures. Now concerning Moses it says, He chose to suffer with God's people. Then enjoying the pleasures of this world for a season. So we see that. Pleasure is something that would draw many disciples, many a disciple away from their destiny and the purpose of God. Pleasure.
But we see that Moses as a young man, he chose to suffer with God's people then to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Pleasures of this world. Now let me just give you a few scriptures. The book of Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21. And verse 17. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. <laughs> he that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. Surely a poor man spiritually too. Turn again with me to Isaiah chapter 47 and 8. Therefore, Isaiah 47 and verse 8. Therefore, hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures. That dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. Thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly. So we see that pleasures can ruin our lives. And this world is bidding us, you know, there is so much there in the world to draw our attention, enticing us. Then again, let us turn to the book of Luke, chapter 8. I'm not explaining all these verses. Luke, chapter 8. Verse 14, when the Lord spoke about the example of the parable of the seed and the soil. He says in verse 14, <coughs> excuse me, and that which fell among the thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and the pleasures of this life. Remember, brothers and sisters, pleasures can choke this spiritual life of yours and mine and bring no fruit to maturity or perfection. You know, so pleasures can be a spoiler in the life of a disciple. And when we are young, we see that we can be so easily drawn to these things. Very easily. But remember, they will choke your spiritual progression and there shall be no fruit of maturity, to maturity. So it can bring spiritual barrenness, in other words, in our life.
It, it can bring poverty in our spiritual life. As we saw from Proverbs 21, 17, pleasures can bring poverty, both natural and spiritual. Pleasures can keep us in false security, as we saw from Isaiah 47, 8. Pleasures can bring us to spiritual barrenness and uh, there will be no fruitfulness and maturity. And pleasures can also leave us in a place of presumption in our lives. We can turn to the book of Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12 and verse 19. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. So pleasures can leave us in a place of presumption in our lives. And there is a very strong word in the book of uh, 1 Timothy. Paul's expression is very, very strong. 1 Timothy. Chapter 5. And verse 6. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Paul is speaking about widows. But he says, but he that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. And that can apply to anyone in that sense. You know, one of the things Paul speaks about the end times, we read in 2 Timothy chapter 3. And uh, verse 1 it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. He says many things, I'm just skipping them all and coming to our subject here, verse 4. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. Now that gives you a little definition about lovers of pleasure. Let me just read what Paul says, I mean, what it says in the Amplified. <coughs> All right, it says here, uh, they shall be treacherous, betrayers, rash, and inflated with self-conceit. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements more than and rather than lovers of God. You know, so I think this also gives us shades of meaning here. Sensual play, pleasures and vain amusements more than, rather than lovers of God. So this is one of the signs of the end times that this will increase. And how true that is today. Look at the world around us. You know, there is something called weekend fever. You know weekend fever? Everybody wants to travel in the weekends. Go out and enjoy life. With whom you go out, no matter. <laughs> That's why airline tickets, you know, promoters say, for you and one more person. They don't say who that one person is. <laughs> it's no more. It's all disappearing. 
So we are living a corrupt world today, morally so corrupt. So people go out, uh, they want to enjoy and feed the flesh. Pleasure is nothing else but sensual satisfaction. That can be in, in, in many, many ways. Sensual, natural, sense knowledge, sensual satisfactions. Sensual amusements and enjoyments. And that's a very large uh, subject again. So it's very difficult for me to explain all that, but I'm sure this is very, very clear and would help us. So we see that, you know, as lovers of God, we cannot be lovers of pleasures. Very simple as that. You know, and we know that if we, we are people of the pleasures of life, then we cannot be those who will please God. The reason is, when we love pleasure, our attention is there, our time is invested there, our energies are diverted there. And so, what I can say to all of us is, you know, this is one of the signs of the end times, pleasures of, uh, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. Oh,